Hello, good morning, lovely to be with you today. Pentecost Sunday is creeping closer and closer, and to be honest, I'm really quite envious of Ken, who has the, the privilege of leading Pentecost service uh, in a few days' time. I want to read a few verses, and, and I want you to listen carefully to them. Remember, we're talking about God's empowering presence, which is my understanding of of who the Holy Spirit is. Two of the verses that I'm going to use are verses that we used on Monday and Tuesday. Um, and here goes. Uh, which father among you, having a child who asks for bread, would give him a snake? Or asks for an egg and gives him a scorpion? And if you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So just hold that verse in your mind. And the other verse is from Timothy. Fan into flame the gift of God that was given to you when I laid hands on you. The Spirit of God does not make you afraid, but empowers you, and enables you to love and to master yourself. That's the second verse. And then this one, taken from John chapter 4, where Jesus is talking to the Samaritan woman who engages him at that well. You remember the well of Sychar. And Jesus says to her, remember he'd asked her for a drink and she responds. And Jesus says, if you knew the gift of God, and who it is that is asking you for a drink. You would ask him and he would give you living water. So there's the first verse from Luke 11, the second verse from 2 Timothy 1, and this third verse from John 4. Did you pick up a common theme? Yes, of course you did. You know what the word that is common to all of them? And you know, the Holy Spirit is not someone whom you must earn, begging. The Holy Spirit, according to each of those passages, is a gift. Now think of that. The living, dynamic reality of God as a gift. Now. That is mind-boggling if you stop to think about it. It is something God wants to give to us. Why do we either stand with our hands behind our backs or turn our heads away instead of just opening our hands and say, Lord, this is what you want to impart to me. Remember Jesus in the upper room. The disciples are locked behind closed doors after the resurrection. Jesus suddenly appears and he says, peace. And then what does he do? He breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit, the gift of God, God's empowering presence for you and for me. So at some point in today, sit quietly with open hands and say, Lord, may I know this wonderful, unsurpassable gift of your spirit, your empowering presence in my life. God be with you. I look forward to being with you tomorrow.